Um, hello, so today we are going to do um, this problem, which is part of Lead Code Weekly Contest, Bi-Weekly Contest 100. Um, so this problem is the second one, maximize greatness of an array. Um, so what we have basically is an array of numbers, and we want to do, permute it, right? We can change the order, you order the array in any order we want, but with the goal of maximizing um, a specific value called greatness. Now, this greatness value is calculated by just um, in the number of um, indices where the element in the permutation is bigger than the one in the original array. That's all, all there is. So, for example, if we take a look at this one, uh, um, the most optimal one is this, where you can see here we have 1 bigger than 2, so uh, 2 bigger than 1, and then here, 5 bigger than 3. Um, this one, we don't count it because it's smaller, right? Um, this one is bigger, so we do count it here. So we count this, we count this, we count this. Um, and then 1 is, uh, 3 is bigger as well um, here. Um, and then uh, this one is smaller. Right, this one is smaller. Right, so overall we have four bigger, so that's what we count. So that's the the problem. I uh, so, uh, the problem uh, statement. Now, how do we how do we solve it? Um, now, how do we how do we tackle this? So, the first thing to think about is it's always it's going to be better to always tackle the smallest element first. So, for example, one here. Because once we tackle the first smallest element then we can sort of find a strategy to to tackle bigger elements. What do I mean by that? So if for the smallest element, we pick the smallest next element that is bigger than it, so sort of the successor, right? So for example, for this one, we pick two, the smallest one, right? Because if we pick two, then if we have a higher number like three, it's always better to pick the smallest because let's say we pick the largest and pick it five, right? then we, we will no longer be able to find a match for three. So let's say for this one, we picked, um, we permuted this one with two, right? So we put here five instead of putting two. Then for this three, the problem is no matter what we put here, it's not going to be bigger, right? So to maximize our chances of having, finding something bigger than three, right? We need to put to select here the smallest element that is bigger than one. So if we select two, then here we would find a solution. And here we would have in this permutation we would have the greatness at, for now at least two, which is better than if we had done picked the larger element for one here. Then here we won't find it, and we will have the greatness be just value one, right? So that's the gist of the idea here. Is that for sm pick the smallest, handle the smallest number first, and for the smallest number, pick the smallest element bigger than it. So sort of pick the, its successor, and by pick here we mean use that as the permutation in the same index, right? So that's the gist of the idea. Now, knowing this, where we want to handle the smallest numbers first, then the first idea that should come to your mind is, okay, let's just sort the array, because we want to take care of the smallest number first so that we can permute their position with the next smaller one um, and so with that idea we should sort the array first right so first we sort the array which means here we'll do something like uh, one 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 two three three five so this is after sorting uh, one 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 two three three five okay so once we sort the array what should we do well what we can do is basically exactly what we said here for each index, right? So we'll iterate through the array with i, and we'll, for each i, basically we'll look for r, where we'll look for the smallest a r, right? That will give us a valid, that will be a valid permutation, or will be um, a greatness permutation, right? What do I mean by that? Basically it means we want such that IR is a, a gradient permutation, which basically means that we want, right, A of R, 
to be a is going to be this sorted array to be um, bigger than a of i, right? Because that will tell us um, that will tell us this is um, this is a, a, a good permutation, right? Um, and so that's exactly what we are going to do. So we start i here and we start r, r here and we want to count the greatness value here, which is initially zero. Okay. And so now we will keep moving i as long as this condition is not valid because we want to reach the smallest integer bigger than the, the current number i, right? And so we'll keep moving r um, until r reaches here and now we will get one bigger than two. Okay, and so now we found a pair. What what are the indices here? Now we found a pair, uh, which is zero. Now we found a pair which is uh, zero and three, right? So this is a valid permutation. And so let's count it. So we have one, and then we keep moving out. We move now our pointer. Now because we already now we know that we permute i with r, we can move i. Right to here. Now, what does this mean? This basically means let's actually just write down our permutation list uh, so that you can understand here. So, what this means is that what we have here now in our this is our permutation is we have two here. Basically, this means that we have permutation between these two, right? Okay. And so now we move our we moved our i and we need to move our r because we already permuted that one here. And so we put our R here. And now we, we do the same thing. We keep it increasing R until we find this valid condition. Until, until we find a, um, basically the smallest number that is bigger than A of I. Right? So basically we keep, keep incrementing R until we find A of R that is bigger than A of I. That's what we are doing. That's what we are doing here. Um, and so here now one is uh, three is bigger than two is bigger than one so this is valid permutation so our next valid permutation is index one and index four and so that would mean that here in our array we have three permute this one with this one this is the permutation because so this is bigger this is bigger so now our count is two and now we m we move our r because we already associated it. So our r he is here. We move our i. Our i is here. Now it's bigger, and so that means we have another valid permutation, which is between two and five. Okay. And so we c we increment our count to three, and so that means that here, the permutation is f for this one here is going to be three. Okay. And then we move again, right? So we move again. Now our i is here. Our r is here. And now, what's the the index here? Now uh, two. Right. R a of r is five. Right. So a of r is five. So five is bigger than two. So this is another valid permutation between index three and six. So this is a valid permutation. So four. And so here in our permutation, this means we have here uh, five, okay? And now we can stop because now we know we already exhausted this. So this three here has to be associated with one because there is nothing left bigger than it, right? And so here we can just imagine that you just have ones, the, the remaining elements here for our permutation. But for the purpose of our counting, we, we, should, we can stop because we know that for this three, there is no longer any, th uh, sorry, for this three, uh, so this one is for, these are for the ones, this is for two. So for this three, we know that we won't find anything bigger than it later on. So we, don't need, we, don't, we no longer need to continue the process. So we should stop here. And this is the permutation, but we won't actually calculate the permutation. We'll just do this uh, traversal and then return the final count. Right? So that's roughly the idea is that we, for, we, we first sort the array so that we can tackle the smallest elements first. Right? And then for each smaller element, we'll look for a valid permutation where, but we want to do it in a greedy way where we pick the smallest element that is bigger than the element in position i. 
So that's that's the, the greedy concept here. Um, if you want to prove this greedy concept, you can think of it sort of in, in, in exchange argument that I mentioned in the beginning, where if you ha had taken five for this one, just exchange it with the smaller one, which is two, and that is more optimal because then you can achieve, um, then you can achieve a bigger, uh, a bigger greatness value, right? So you could use the exchange argument to prove it. Um, yeah, now let's just implement this and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's implement this. So first we said, uh, let's just make this A so that it matches what we said in the overview. So we sort it first. And then we need um, to have a count equal to zero. And then we need R equal to zero that will um, calculate for us. And then we go through the indices. W we just keep iterating I. Now for each I, we want to, I want to just pick the length here. Now for each I, uh, we want to find, right, smallest number bigger than a of i, right? So that we can have the permutation uh, with pair uh, i r, right? And so to do that, well, we will keep going as long as r is smaller than n and a of r is smaller than or equal to a of i, okay? B basically, when we stop, it means we found an A of R that is bigger, and that's the smallest one because A is sorted, right? And so as long as this is not the case, we'll... Now, when we are here, we found it. So found a valid, like mo most optimal uh, valid pair, or call it greatness pair, that's what we mean here. Um, and so as long as R is smaller than N, which means it's valid, then what we are going to do here is we increase the count because this is for the pair, the permutation pair here, um, I R. And then we'll increment R because since this is a valid one, we want to go to the next one. We shouldn't count R, use R twice. Um, and then at the end, we can just return count. Okay. So let's see if this works. Looks good so far. We'll submit. And it passes our test cases. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this solution. Um, you could you could try if you want to make it not use this while loop. Um, it should definitely be doable. So you could just do um, something like this. Um, so just have i here as zero, and then just do this while r is smaller than n, and then instead of doing this, we will do if only if this is actually the case that we will increment um, because we found one, so we'll increment both. But if we haven't found it, right, then we, we just want to increment um, R, right, to have a chance to find the next one that is valid. So that means we can do something like this. And when do we increase count? Only if we found a valid pair. So here we can increase count. Okay, um, so this should work as well, as long as r is smaller than n, because we want to stop when r reaches the end. Um, so it looks good. And this is accepted. Um, and since this is, u this is easier to actually estimate time complexity, because here you see um, we have r, and each time we increment r. So overall, this will run only n times. But we are doing a sorting here that is of n log n. So overall, the time complexity is going to be O of n log n. Um, and in terms of space, we are not using really an extra space, so it's going to be O of one space. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Uh, please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one. Bye.